Genetically modified crops have taken over the agricultural world, and cannabis might be next. Let's dive into this hot debate. Come on, but before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you gotta check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone, breaks those nutrients down, and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, Hi C. You want to get into this one? Yeah, I already see the hate comments piling up, but let's talk about it. Let's start actually with why people are so opposed to gen genetically modified crops to start with. Because it's not natural. Because it's definitely playing God, and they've done some weird stuff already with them. If I think about uh, Roundup Ready corn is the most disturbing one that you can just spray poison on, but it won't hurt the corn. Probably won't hurt you either. We'll see in like 50 years. Uh, you see, that's my first thing <laughs> yes. is I think that uh, let's explain what Roundup Ready corn is or Roundup, Roundup Ready crops are for people because I think that's one of the biggest and most legitimate concerns. Sure. Uh, with Roundup Ready corn, they take, there's something called CRISPR and CRISPR is like genetic scissors. It can cut out pieces of DNA. They can reinsert them, uh, but they cut out the piece of DNA that is responsible for Roundup working on corn. Roundup normally will kill grass. It's designed to kill grass, any grass in nature. It's very broad spectrum. Man, now you've got it to where you can just spray corn with Roundup from an airplane. And uh, the Roundup is still there. It just doesn't kill the corn. And it seems to, I mean, it's screwing people up. And you're not hearing about it so much on the news because they covered it. It's screwing people up. You're not supposed to eat uh, corn that's loaded with Roundup. But because they make it resistant, then they can pour more and more on it. It can absorb more of that. Is Roundup a pesticide, a herbicide? No, pesticide, man. Roundup is a true pesticide, but they can do this to herbicides too. They can cut out the, the DNA that's responsible for that response. So it's disturbing. They got the, well, again, with corn, they've got BT corn, which makes its own poison. Now, granted, this poison is like the most, it's bacillus but it makes its own. What's that mean? Is that going to screw up the ecosystem? Are the bugs going to become immune to it? Well, I don't know. And then as an end consumer, if they're making it to where they can put more poison to kill off the bugs, mm -hmm. does that poison then get into me as I'm eating that food? And what do we know about uh, uh, bugs? They get resistant to things. That's why when you get pesticides, it's crop rotation and things. Are they ruining Bacillus thuringiensis for us? So any uh, grower can't use it because every bug is resistant to it because a Roundup Ready BT. Yeah, so there's all kinds of potential negative side effects of just that aspect of genetic engineering. Yes, there is. And then I've also heard stories about genetically modified crops leaking into the neighbor farms yes stuff and so and then there's lawsuits and all kinds of crazy stuff you're gonna get mad for a diversion you know why people hate monsanto so much because they'll let their be their uh, genetically modified stuff creep into your crops and then they'll sue you for not paying them their licensing fee yeah <laughs> all right i gotta calm down that is so <laughs> rotten man. but it is true i've seen <laughs> stories about that so i can see the patent issue, the sure. poison issue. Sure. And then the last thing, specifically for growers, I know that like there's a huge ethos of organic nature sure. inside of the growing community. Mm -hmm. And I think that right there, just kind of like the dogma, the religion of growing, there's there's pushback against genetic modifying just from that. Of course, man. We're taking something from Afghanistan and something from Alaska and crossing them, and it's art. It's real art. This is taking the art out and saying, I am snapping the powdery mildew-resistant gene from spinach and inserting it here, and now, you know, it's a lot less art and a lot more mad scientist, I think. Sets strangely with a lot of folks okay let's switch gears real quick sure because i know there are pros or at least reasons to argue for genetic modification and let's talk about in the regular agriculture world sure what are some of the reasons that people are pro genetically modifying stuff 
uh, because it increases, it can increase your quality. I mean, with strawberries, they've got them to where they're bigger and they're sweeter. They can actually modify the terpene profile, which is crazy. Uh, disease resistance, they can make their own uh, defense mechanisms for bugs and, and diseases. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? Yeah, and you were telling me in Florida, there's there was something going on with the orchards of citrus plant or citrus. citrus greening took that industry from a multi-billion dollar industry to a 25 million dollar you know it just crushed the industry and then what they figured out is it took a spinach a gene from spinach and inserted into the citrus that it was resistant to the cichlid so it was resistant to the bug that brought the greening it's pretty amazing man so it can be used but I guess the thing that worries me then is it sounds like a Franken food. It is. Now I'm eating uh, something that would have never occurred in nature. If you think about it, a human brings a plant from Alaska to Afghanistan that is kind of natural, right? A human did it. You know, it's a lot different when you're taking uh, DNA and inserting it using a computer and a gene splicer. It's a little different. I don't know. I guess a human did that too. <laughs> yeah, but what's what's immediately hitting me is uh, I, I know that like broccoli and all kinds of other kale, they all originate from the same plant and they're sure. just grown Brassicas, different ways. Yeah. yeah, and same with cannabis. There's a lot of almost, it's genetically modified. A lot of the Tremendously. strains. Trem by people though. By people and by a more natural process. I think the, the unnaturalness of the Franken food is what scares me. If you try to combine uh, a spinach and cannabis plant or spinach and citrus, they won't combine. They won't cross. Uh, to do that, you really have to you know, use things that we invented 50 years ago, gene editors and all that stuff, man. That is sequencers. That's crazy. It's just so new, you know? And it's also, uh, I don't know if it's tested enough for me to trust it yet. <laughs> Put it this way, they're already having lawsuits about it getting out and ruining other people's stuff, so probably not. Okay, let's talk about one last point on this. Sure. Minus the Roundup Ready stuff. Yeah. What are some of the ways that they're making crops more resistant to pests? The BT is a big one. Bacillus thuringiensis, that's what's in the mosquito dunks. Uh, that's what's uh, a natural. If you look on all the websites, the most natural cure for fungus gnats is using Bacillus thuringiensis. Great. They've used it forever. Not forever. They've used it for a long time. Uh, somebody at Monsanto had the great idea of putting that gene into corn so corn makes its own bacillus thuringiensis now. So when uh, bugs eat that corn, they don't want to eat it anymore. Now, granted, I know that nature finds a way. So is that going to ruin the efficacy of bacillus thuringiensis for us forever? I don't know. So what I'm thinking immediately is better tasting strawberries. Who wouldn't want better tasting cannabis? More pest resistant corn who wouldn't want more pest resistant cannabis but am i willing to make that trade-off yeah i will say that this is something we're volatizing we're not even you know when you eat something like corn it goes through your digestive system uh you've got these filters these natural filters your kidneys and your liver um when you are inhaling something directly into your lungs directly into your bloodstream it is bypassing all those intermediaries so there is no filter <laughs> You know, your digestive system isn't filtering things for you. Right. And we kind of touched on it. Mixing strains and coming up with those unicorns is one way that we've already kind of played around with genetic modification. Sure. One thing that came up for me was autoflowers. Are they a form of genetic modification? Sure. I mean, you're taking something from Russia. You know, I think they found that that in the Earl Mountains of Russia, and then they're crossing it with, like I like to say, Afghanistan or Southern, Southern California or Alaska or wherever all these strains are coming from, and then they're crossing them. That's not exactly – that wouldn't – I don't know. Would that happen in nature? Don't forget, we're natural, though. So for us to go and – Use a car or a boat or an airplane. Is that as weird as using a gene sequencer? Now you got me freaked out, bro. Okay, and then this is the one that will probably get us some hate. I'm thinking about feminized seeds, and I've heard the way that they make feminized seeds. It adds chemicals. They induce things that aren't natural. It's not natural. Colloidal silver is not natural. It's blocking the, the ability for the plant to make male hormones. 
That is a lot like what we're talking about, man. Yeah, so already cannabis growers have embraced quite yes. a few aspects of genetic modification. Yes, exactly. So what happens when they say, hey, if you want more CBG and CBN, if you want more THCV, just use this one. And they can actually just cut the custom tailor cannabinoids for you. Terpenes, that'd be pretty crazy. They're doing that. Strawberries, they're called, talking about custom tailoring the volatile organic compounds. That's terpenes. That's what they're talking about, man. And didn't you say that there's already a company here in Colorado that's messing with CRISPR and cannabis? Yeah. I was playing around yesterday. Front Range Bio, about three or four hours from here, is definitely playing around with it, man. Yields, uh, disease resistance, their, uh, and custom cannabinoid profiles. That was one I was, you can go to their website, frontrangebio.com. I was like, whoa, this is pretty crazy, man. So they're doing it. Those are just a few of my thoughts on genetically modified cannabis. What about you? Would you smoke it? Would you grow it? Let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommended. I know you'll dig